Well, welcome back. Uh, this is the AM Show. It's a special day, like I indicated. Today, we hear from His Excellency the President-elect on the state of our nation. I'll tell you, though, the state of the Twitter trend, something that escaped me, the, the, the latest one. The AM Show is actually trending, so you're in the right place. But what is your state of the nation? What is the state of your pocket? You heard me talk about the depreciation of the CD and all of that in uh, 2020. What is the state of the economy for you personally? What is the state of the nation? What is the state of your roads, the hospitals, the other facilities that you need? I mean, me, if you asked me about the state of the nation, I would talk about my lack of access to water where I find myself, the difficulty in getting water, even amidst the free water distribution and all of that. And a whole lot to talk about. I would talk about electricity tariffs that are running amok, rampant, and how difficult it is dealing with them. I mean, I've been posting about that on social media lately. So if you ask me about my state of the nation, I would have quite a lot to talk about on both sides, negative and positive. But for you, what is your state of the nation? Residents of the Bono East region have been sharing uh, their expectations ahead of today's address. Let's check out that one. With the president, Nana Adudankwe Kufado, set to deliver his last State of the Nation address for his first term in office, we hit the streets of uh, Kenten, a suburb of the Chiman, to inquire from residents here of uh, their assessment uh, for his first term, the highs and the lows, as well as their expectations of his second term in office. Nana uh, what I am excited about Nadu's first term is the introduction of the free senior high school. Because as parents, the free SHS is very important. Some of us have been heavily affected for lack of education. And so that policy is very important for me. Uh, the president, Akufuado, the first term, the free SHS is the most important policy under Nana Dudankwe Akufado's first tenure. But in terms of infrastructure, he failed the country a lot. Like I say, we see infrastructure is normally acquired. In fact, we began it from. The Osha, a few clans are back on their two-year election. I am sure that is why Ghanaians voted against him during the 2020 general elections. But that for me is not the right thing. The first thing that he have done, uh, he have made a good idea for... Whilst they share with us some one or two things they felt went so positive about the first term of His Excellency Nado Dankwe Kufado, they however have some lows in relation to his first term. The as a driver, sometimes passengers complain of high lorry fares, but that is as a result of high fuel prices as well as cost of spare parts. So we are hoping that these things are taken care of this time around. The first four years now, I'm going to go to the next one. What went wrong within the first four years is that as drivers, insurance has to be affordable for us, but that's not the case. So we will be pleased if that is considered in his next term. Going forward, what are their expectations in the second term of the Nana Rudankwe Kufado led government? The government needs to work towards providing jobs for the people. If that is done, there won't be insecurity in the country. 
I suggest government construct roads, hospitals, and other infrastructural projects that would help develop the country. That is what I think would help in his second term. From the streets here in Techiman, in the Bono East region, my name is Anna Sabit, reporting for Joy News. So from Techiman, uh, Bono East, uh, people sharing their thoughts there. What is your state of the nation and what are your expectations ahead of what uh, the president is going to be delivering uh, today? Let's check out what is, uh, you know, on Facebook as well. Some of you have been sharing with us, uh, you know, your thoughts on this particular subject. And we'll just pick a few of your thoughts. Uh, Silas Ousu Setra says, and then he continues again. Okay, I didn't get the thrust of that one. But Philip Nkrumah, the best president ever in the Fourth Republic. If you have any doubts about that, it's either you are, uh, okay, so I can't uh, read that out, or you are frustrated in life, period. So people taking uh, some entrenched positions as far as the Sona is a uh, concern. I can't read that one. Uh, from Anderson Kwabena, the language not tasteful. But uh, let's see. So Robert Jebu just sends, uh, you know, it's a bit of an emoji there. Okay, so some of you sharing your thoughts uh, there. We'll be picking some uh, more. But let's cross over now to the northern region's capital, Tamale, where some residents have also been sharing their thoughts about the state of the nation, the state of Ghana today. Let's hear them. All is said for the swearing-in of the president-elect Nane Kufado to begin his second term. Joy News has been sampling the views of Ghanaians on his performance and what they hope to see differently in the next four years. The residents praise him for some policies they say were pro-poor policies and that helped Ghanaians. Um, the government before his government, um, there was this embargo on employment. But when he came, they were able to negotiate through things and then was able to recruit people into teaching and then even our teaching staff. And also, he brought on that pool, which recruited a lot of uh, graduates like me, for instance. And then, um, um, just recently, we had uh, nutrition students from the UDS, for instance. They, most of them, almost all badges, those badges as women, well, just the current badges, they have been employed into the system. He has brought a lot of relief in the Ghanaian people. For example, he brought us a free senior high. We have had NAPU and I am the Nation Business Corp, which has employed many unemployed graduates. He's able to implement good policies, like with the likes of free SHS, graduate unemployment, example like NAPU. He was able to implement those things to help the youth. And more importantly, when you look at policies like free SHS, I think many people in this country are poor. So the free SHS policy has come to help many parents regarding payment of school fees. They also criticized the president for failing to deal with corruption. There were some challenges with his government. Looking at the one village, one down, one million per constituency, we didn't see it. So um, most of those work were just shadow work or political talk, just to entice the public to vote for them. Uh, I think quite apart from this, the ministers, there were more ministers with shadow work or just some limited work they did. So I think. They were just there, um, they used our pu public money to pay them, but then the work they did was just something bigger. Some of the things that me, I see that this government could do well is the issue of corruption. I think many government officials under this era were engaged in certain things that we were not happy. So we were expecting the government to act strongly on them. Uh, uh, I heard about uh, this thing, Ejipa, royalty tea. During his tenure of office, um, there wasn't any reshuffling. We didn't see any reshuffling. So any minister who was appointed to an office took it as a yardstick to misbehave. 
because he or she knows very well that whatever be the case, he or she wouldn't be what? Reshuffled. So one thing is he should know the kind of people he deals with. He shouldn't run the country as speculated by uh, the opposition that is running a, a what? A, a friends and family government. As he takes the oath to begin his second turn, they want to see a lean government and corruption tackled. So for me, what I'm, what I'm expecting from uh, Akufuado is that there are certain things that he needs to do. For example, like these corruption issues. They should, they should ensure that this right to information bill, they should make it available so that anything that they are coming to do, it will be transparent so that everybody in this country will see how those things could be run. He should just continue with what he was doing. But with regards to the ministers, I think he should catch it down. At least half of, um, I think it's 200, uh, 120 now, so at least half of that, I think they can do their work. I'm much concerned about the number of ministers he include in the government. We should cut them down and also make sure that whosoever performs low, Within his administration, the person should be, be advised to go home. Right, so some residents of Tamale sharing their thoughts there, sharing some things that have also been on my mind. A number of ministers, how many are there in even a developed economy like Japan? How about the United States? How many secretaries do they have? Corruption and how it's been dealt with also on my mind. And hopefully we'll hear Mr. President give us a summation of his thinking of how we fared in 2020. Let's cross over now to WA to check out what some of those residents there think about Ghana and its state currently. President Ekupado is mandated by the constitution of the country to add start and end of his session of parliament to deliver the state of the nation address. On Tuesday, he is expected to fulfill the constitutional mandate. We are at the heart of town to precise the central business district of the one municipality. We want to get the mood, speak to the people about the highs and lows of the Akupado administration. For the good things, that is the free senior high. Then when it comes to the COVID-19, we can also talk of the free electricity and the free water. These are some of the things actually we have done that I've cherished so much. What about the flip side? That one we'll talk, we'll talk of the election violence and the other this and that we are facing now. These are some of the bad things. The election violence is what we are crying of. If he can tell the safe institutions to work as they are supposed to work on. It would have been the free HHS, but with the double track system in it and the way they did it so fast. It hasn't helped us. That would have been the best if he had taken his time to study the terrain, to look at the infrastructure development, whether there's infrastructure before implementing it. Because the double track system haven't helped us. And if they don't take it off, it will not help us. Every government will actually touch on some points. To be honest enough, he did his own. But I think that wasn't satisfactory enough to point out that this is what Akuf Ado has done, which is that much beneficial to us as Ghanaians. So for you, you have seen nothing? I can tell, I can point at what. Governance. Let's look at Apawas, for instance. That's a case study. What can you point in Apawas that this is what Nana Akuf Ado has done? That we can rely on that to say that this is what we have achieved. He has got free HHS. Free HHS. HHS. It's a pity. Planting for food and job. It's a pity. Talking of free HSS, possibly some other part of the country can talk of free HSS, but not the northern part of Ghana. We have been benefiting free HSS, not today. It's our entitlement that the forefathers fought for us. All that we've been saying is taking part of our entitlement. We've been enjoying free HSS, not today. And if you talk of free HSS, let's go back. Before 2016, there was free HSS, progressively. And it was moving in accordance, not just jamming up everything, students will be in the house. Now, my little, my little kids are getting pregnant all over. As a teacher, I will sit in the house. Many of my students today, when I see them, I will not identify them as students. The only thing I will identify them to be ladies around flexing. 
They have nothing doing. They don't go to school any longer. So what else can these people stand to benefit if we are talking that there is free senior high school? The high number of ministers appointed by President Ekubado also came to the fore. I haven't seen anything much because I've not seen the ministers doing anything. I've not seen it. I'm yet to see. So you think that... Uh, they, they, they all sit, sat behind the fence. So I'm yet to see. So you think that the number of ministers that were appointed over It was too much. It was too much? Yes. It was too much. So if they downsize it, it will help. And if they also look at the, the ones that will be competent and put them there, it will help us. They should appoint because they are MPP members. They should look at those who can do the work. Because it is Ghanaian taxpayers' money that is used to pay them. So if they don't look at Ghanaians as people who voted them in and look, at the, look for the best people to uh, help him develop the nation, we will still be at where we are. Several people have commended the government for implementing proper policies which has improved the economic well-being of the people. Others think that the four-year reign of the government is a complete waste of their time. One of them is this man writing as a pilon and gave his name only as Movit. You, has Akubaro not employed you? I haven't employed anything. It'd be lie. It'd be great lie. It'd be lie. Anybody say that Akubaro don't employ anybody say lie. Look at my wife. We are a hustler. Let me say, get into 20 years today. Chop, you get new money. We do not see the money. And you are enjoying the money alone. Why? We, we, the, we the poor people, what are you doing? Despite the numerous projects, the government said it has implemented in the Upper West region. The people are saying that they are yet to fill it in their pockets. It is their hope that the next four years will be better. The Fortune Bojoy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. And if you hear wa like that, you know Rafik Salam is on the beat. But we're going to, you know, be interacting with some of you. Of course, some of you are calling the lines there. Let me just indicate, some of you are, are calling the WhatsApp number. Don't. Rather call the 030-221-1691 extension 2 number. We have Righteous from uh, Keta joining the conversation. Righteous, good morning to you. Good morning, my brother. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for connecting with us. What is your state of the nation? In fact, the president has done a great job. You see, we have to give a time for us to come together mm. and applaud the president for the great work he has done. Mm. Most of the time, we want to uh, discriminate the efforts our leaders are putting across. Right. Even these epidemic issues, the president is able to handle it well. See, the rest of Africa countries, face South Africa mm. and uh, even Europe. When it comes to job implementation, and the, rest, the president is able to roll out policy. So I think these four years ahead of me, better things will come. We have to support, we the citizens have to make effort, put our effort together. Mm -hmm. It's not every time that the president, actually the ministers feel the president, even most of the DC and the MC, they feel the president, they were interested, they were looking for their personal goals and their personal interests, not the development of the nation. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling on all, even our MPs elect, that they should work together and push the president and push better agenda for us. I believe that the next four years is better than either of us. God bless all of us. God bless the president. Thank you. Uh, and for the rest of our callers, I, I'll just put the pointed question uh, to you. What is the state of the nation as far as you are concerned? And how have you directly or indirectly been affected? Do share with us. Break it down for us. Let's come down to the very, you know, minute issues. Richard from Brinsa South uh, joins us. Hello, Richard. Uh, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, so thank you. Right. So what is your state of the nation? Uh, that's what this nation addressed. I will be very happy to hear him saying that he's going to reduce the number of ministers he have. And any minister who he appoints and he misbehaves, then he fired the person. Because it's because he's, he's not firing and rehiring. That's why the corruption issue is very high. And we right. expect him to talk about this corruption. And when you want to look at the video, they went under the, 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 the carpet and recruited their own people and gave them uniforms. And, and, and then they operated around in the, in the name of the military, mm. which is actually a worrisome war, a war thing. And even looking at this killing, nothing has been said about it. So we can get that one too. Thank, Thank you uh, for sharing your thoughts, Richard. Nuruddin also joins us from somewhere in the northern region. Nuruddin, uh, good morning to you. Good morning, and how are you? I'm very well. Uh, Salam alaikum. 
Wa alaikum salam. Right. So what is your state of the nation? In fact, that is excellent in an alcohol acquire. In fact, he does what an appeal could not do. Oh, Most we've of the lost. people that he has been appointed into right. a great position, mm. they have failed him. Mm. So as a matter of fact, at the moment, he needs to reduce the ministers drastically and right. ensure that there's self-discipline going on within the country. That is why um, this thing, in one of Albert Einstein's quotes, by saying that, that the good objective style of leadership is to help those who are doing poorly, do well, and to, do, and to help those who are doing well, to even do better. So Nana Kufado himself, he has done what in Napoleon could do, but looking at what is happening, they have actually disappointed him. So mm. in fact, he should reduce them. Okay. He should reduce them completely. Right. Nuruddin, uh, thank you very much. It, so we've done uh, the Volta region, we've done the Northern Belt. Let's come down south to Cape Coast. Richmond uh, connects with us from there. Richmond, uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Right. So uh, what is your state of the nation? I think uh, in the last four years, uh, the MPP government has done great well with the lives of the free senior high school and NAPCO, which have employed a lot of graduates. Mm. But in going forward, the next four years, I believe that the president will use the ministers. Also, those who didn't perform well in the last four years, mm. we start them and bring competent ones to help with the case. Thank you. Thank you uh, for sharing your thoughts there. I still hear the beeping, so it means uh, we just might have a few more uh, callers. That is, uh, so we'll connect uh, shortly with the next caller, uh, Norbert, who is actually calling us from Adenta. Norbert, welcome aboard the AM show. What is your state of the nation? Well, I think the president has done very well. Mm. Just that he has to reduce his ministers. Okay. That, that's it for you? Hello, Norbert. Hello. Yes, I'm asking, is that it for you? Now, when you look at a country, it's like a pot. There are so many things that go into that pot to make it worth. Infrastructure, yeah, well, the economy, and all of that. What do you have to say about some of the other things? You still have more work to do. Mm. Okay. Norbert from Adenta, thank you very much for sharing uh, your thoughts with us this morning on the AM show. Time now to take some more comments on Facebook. But don't you forget, it is D-Day, and per the Constitution, the State of the Nation Address will be delivered by His Excellency the President at around 10 a.m. today. I uh, will be bringing you live action of that from uh, Parliament House. But let's go on Facebook now. We posed the question, what is your State of the Nation? Here are some of your responses uh, that you've been sending through. So this one says, Seji Shabashi says, it's about our judicial leadership that is controlled, you say, by the executive, which is very dishonest to our democracy. Okay, and then Baba Murahim says, nothing more, just rhetoric. Just rhetoric. Uh, rhetoric doesn't take an S. So just rhetoric, uh, that is what you say.